I don't even remember really thinking like, oh, I, you know, I want to be off the grid and I want to, you know, get out of the regular sort of living situation. It just sort of happened. I guess like it's something I've been interested in for a long, long time, probably since I was a little kid. Um, you know, playing cowboys and Indians or whatever. And um, something I dabbled in a little bit over the years. But then that period of time when I quit racing, I really like kind of got into it for a little while and did a lot of that stuff. And I did go to some some formal education in it and did some uh, educating myself in it and I just was, I don't know, just doing a lot of that stuff, so. And I still, you know, do some of it, but now that I'm like focused on bike racing a lot more and, you know, life just seems to get busy, you know, don't have a ton of time to roam around in the woods and make fires with sticks. Which I, I wish I did. Maybe we can do that later. <laughs> there aren't any, it's not like a huge challenge for us to live this way. It's, it's been a really rewarding experience because everything that we do out here, it's like we do it, I have to do everything myself and all of the benefits of it we we always you know, see like we're you know we have a lot more space now and we have a lot more electric electricity from our solar panels and you know we're just it's really it's really rewarding and we just really love it so i wouldn't want to live in it now as it is like this but as it was when we lived in it, it was it was really nice At this point, it's more rewarding for us to be out here, able to do the things we want to do and be exposed to the beautiful woods out here than it is to be, you know, nestled in a community in a, in a city. We, we, we sort of have some of that in this area out here. Uh, well, it's been updated quite a bit in the last year, but we're off the grid of the solar electricity um, we're off all the other grids, if you want to call them grids. We don't have, we're not collected, connected to any plumbing or anything like that. So electricity comes from solar. Um, we use a composting toilet. Well, wow. it's a bucket. You poop in it. And when you're done, you put sawdust on it. And <clears throat> when it fills up, you take it down to a compost pile, sits there for a year and it's fixed with leaves and whatever else and compost and then comes fertilizer and then it goes on the garden. And you grow food. Plumbing in here is all on a, we'll call it a gray water system. Essentially it leaches out and it basically, it goes into kind of a trench in that sort of leaches into the ground. Um, that's all our uh, kitchen sink and bathroom sink. Um, we also have a urinal, indoor urinal, which is which is new and really great for us, um, which is essentially just a urinal that drains down underground into a leach chamber and leaches underground into the into the ground and that's okay because urine is 100% sterile unless there's unless the person using it has a urinary tract infection or something like that um, so 
a lot of that stuff is set up in the last year. Before that, we were doing things even more manually. So it's it sounds like a, a, a weird, super difficult existence to a lot of people, but it's actually for us right now, it's, it's, it's like plush, <laughs> believe it or not. There's a different farm down the road. Damn it. sacks for a long time I was comfortable I was happy there but um, came a time when I wanted to be a part of uh, be a part of certain innovation that was going on in the industry and I wanted to have more freedom to do certain things and also the reason that one of the reasons that it happened to be the stands no tubes team is because I've been a fan of the technology for a long time. I, you know, would use it on the side and obviously use it on other genres, like mountain biking and road. But also the, you know, the company is a half an hour from my house, and I know the people there, and and <clears throat> the team that is run by Jake Wells is, you know, is really well supported, partially because the company does the support through their employment so like they send the sprinter van and all the support to the to the races and um you know jake and ally and drew and everybody are really great and i think it's a uh, it's really like been the perfect fit for me because you know i didn't really want to go to a i didn't really want to be on a really big team with a lot of a lot of pressure and like you know kind of just a real I don't know hard ass kind of environment like this is more of like you know we're it's kind of more of like a family atmosphere like like it was in my previous team um, and you know the company and our and my proximity to it just makes it even more um, makes it makes it even more make sense because you know I can go down there and do testing and you know, pick up equipment and give them feedback and do all this all this stuff that you normally wouldn't have the ability to do I, I do used to do this too here like this and one day I was at a show and a guy and I laid this down on the bench like this guy said well I've seen that trick before and he slammed it in his hand he thought it had a little spring in it and it's like, it was, and he went, oh, and he was shaking his hand, it was hanging there. And I, give me that. And he said, well, I thought it had a spring and it wasn't even poking a hole in the tire. Constantly a, I don't want to say battle, but I have to sort of strike a, strike a balance between the two because I have a lot of manual labor that I have to do around here. And bike racing is also manual labor and I have to do a certain amount of that. So. I have to balance those two and make sure I'm I'm doing enough of each of them and you know I can't really just say oh I'm not gonna do any of my work around here because I need to be focused on this race it's like no I gotta make sure that I'm doing both of them <clears throat> and at the same time like I don't really want to be that kind of bike racer like who is you know solely focused on winning the race or doing absolutely as best as they can possibly do and that's what their life is 100% focused on. I want my life to be focused on the things I'm interested in and other things that I'm doing and you know I also want to be a good bike racer and you know put a good amount of effort into that too. So I need to have a definitely need to have a balance.
Yeah, it's definitely kind of like I live two different existences. It's like, uh, you know, I got this, you know, I live out here and wear flannel and <laughs> roam around in the woods and do stuff like that. And then, you know, an hour later, I'm suiting up in like plastic clothing and riding a plastic bike and doing that whole gig. So yeah, it definitely is like a contradiction. And I think about it all the time. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like you, I don't, you don't really get to choose what you're gonna do and what you're be gonna become. You kind of like make choices along the way and then it sort of morphs into something. And I feel like that's what cycling is for me. Like I, I've done it since I was 13 and it's just one of those things that um, I just have been doing for so long that I'm like, it's ingrained in me and I just, I'm sort of good at it. And then and I just, you know, successful with it and you want to keep going with it and I do enjoy it. Um, but then I got, you know, my life at home here that is also like something that I've chosen to be and it happens to be sort of a contradiction. So I'm still doing both of them. And you know, at some point the, the bike racing thing is going to fade away. You know, I'm not going to be somebody who's out there racing masters. It's, it's going to be my elite level career is done. I'm going to be done and I'll be you know, focusing more time on my life here. A bunch of stuff you can use. This is goldenrod flowers. Cattail down for the coal extender. <laughs> now you got a coal. We're gonna live.